bunch of people. I mean, it's hard to criticize people when you're sitting with them at dinner, drinking with them, socializing with them. Uh, and that, this is how they this is how they get their clutches. That's into the you. answer there. He's powerful. They're trying just like they yeah. bring governors to Bilderberg. They're bringing him there probably to try to co-opt him. Uh, I'm sure they are, because, you know, once you get a taste of that Savruga caviar that sells for like uh, two hundred dollars for an ounce, you know, you you, you can be swayed very, uh, very easily. All right, we'll continue to watch it. What do you think's going on, Anthony? Well, I, well, I'm I I'm sure he's there uh, taking it all in, and 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 you know, if if he's a good reader of people, he's going to know when he's being lied to. But I I'm I'm just wondering if he, if if you think he might be in any danger or or no, I mean I mean this might... isn't as as cloak and dagger as Bilderberg. It's pretty much where they put out their globalist propaganda. So a lot of it's just stages and glitz in Hollywood and trade missions. Uh, the people there are sinister. The agenda is sinister. But this is where they soft sell it. It's not like he's meeting with Spectre in the middle of the desert. But but it's a good point. Uh, in fact, I'd be surprised if he didn't go to things like Davos. Uh, you know, I mean, this is what. But, but Wayne's right. They're bringing him there because he's a major up and comer. Uh, now let's go to and, and you'll be riding shotgun with us. Uh, Leanne McAdoo from Flint, Michigan, filing amazing reports at Infowars.com for the nightly news. Leanne, uh, continuing with the breakdown of what's happening there in Flint, I see it as emblematic of this rotting country and what NAFTA and GAD have done uh, and of corrupt government. And I think it's a scapegoat of the governor. And I'm not defending the governor either, but the local city and what's going on, they're just as culpable as the governor, in my view. What's your view? And then we'll get Wayne's view. Well, absolutely. That's kind of something that we're going to be talking about coming up in some upcoming videos. They keep kind of passing the buck saying, well, no, it was this emergency manager. Well, no, it was this emergency manager. But it does, I mean, again and again and again, the red flags were there and they just kept passing the buck. The city voted against uh, getting cut off from the Detroit water. Then they wanted to get cut off. And so they're trying to figure out who to blame. But it's not about blaming one person. It's about fixing the problem. And it's so corrupt here. The government is so bloated and corrupt that nobody can fix anything. They all just want to run around pointing blame. And you're going to be talking to locals about the real number of deaths and more. But that's a good point, Wayne. In the final equation, why do you think Flint resembles uh, Calcutta? Well, I think it's, again, it's the, it's the they killed every manufacturing job almost in this country. With all this uh, baloney, these baloney trade agreements, uh, and uh, I mean NAFTA, it was supposed to open the border between the United States and Canada. I didn't need a passport before NAFTA to go back and forth to Canada. I, I need one now. And, uh, and 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 appointing emergency managers is so undemocratic. We saw it happen in Detroit. They try to raffle. They try to raffle off to the highest bidder all this Detroit art museum. Uh, these priceless collections just to make money for the city. And then the same thing happened in Flint with these emergency men. Yeah, it's, they, it's, they, it's they, good money after bad. Wayne, stay right. there. Stay there. We're going to come back with Leanne for this segment and the next. And then we're going to pass the baton to David Knight. But Leanne, what else are you going to be covering when we return? Well, we are going to be uh, talking with a local here coming up later. And he wants to take us right to the heart of it, right to these neighborhoods. That's where he, his dog actually died from the lead poisoning with the water. So Wow. Getting into that as well. Wow. Uh, amazing. Stay there. Uh, Leanne McAdoo reporting from Flint, Michigan. Pray for her and Michael Zimmerman that are in the middle of this. It is a real war zone, high crime, you name it. We're not here covering all these negative things to just say it's all over. The world's great. We have such innovation. Humanity can go to the stars together. Life extension, it's all within our grasp. The elite are producing a scientific dictatorship called a technocracy, in Davos' own words, with a planetary regime above the law. It's the 21st century threat. People now know about it. We force it out in the open. You force it out in the open. The battle is joined. I want to go to uh, Howard and uh, Steve, uh, listening on KOMY, and, and, and John, and a few others here in just a second. But uh, Leanne, uh, I know your reports are coming out. A lot of them are on Infowars.com. Uh, I know you're going to talk to locals and point out, hey, they add fluoride and all this other stuff in the water afterwards. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, kind of an oxymoron to complain about the lead, but then look at this. But, I mean, it is crazy that they knew people were dying. And, and, and I mean, people should go to prison for this, Leanne. Where do you think all this is going? 
Well, I mean, that's the thing that's just so frightening. I've, I've talked to some people here and they say they don't want this to get politicized because that's going to just congest the congest the whole thing even further. I mean, just dig up the lead pipes. And so that's sort of the gridlock that we're seeing here with this. But I mean, as these emails come out, as the people are beginning to see just how deep this cover up went and just the neglect and just people passing the buck saying, no, don't tell anyone. I mean, we have emails from mothers who were taking their children into the doctor uh, saying, you know, they're getting these rashes and taking these blood samples. And then the doctors, I guess they would get some orders from high up that would say, no, don't take those samples. Incredible. We can't trust those. I mean, it's just. Well, Leanne, insane. there's your headline. I mean, if you've got that, do a report. Just talk about the reports you're getting. Mothers, mothers, doctors told, doctors covered up sick babies in Flint. I mean, that is incredible. See how this culture of cover up just rolls downhill, Wayne Madsen? Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me because, um, uh, you know, as I was saying, the, the first uh, casualty of appointing emergency managers for cities is that the emergency manager comes in and tells the mayor, I'm in charge. The mayor says, well, where are you from? Well, the emergency ma managers usually aren't even from that town. Or they're FEMA even, minions. They're from another state in some cases, like the one they uh, gave to Detroit. And so the mayor is shunted aside. The city council has no say. The emergency manager takes his orders from the governor, in this case, Snyder and Lansing. And, uh, and, and it looks like maybe some of uh, 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 Snyder's friends in, in the uh, healthcare industry, which uh, is, is one of the major contributors, by the way, to his campaign. Oh, uh, made money off the sick. Yeah. An and, insurance scam. Well, if that's the case, he needs to be right. indicted. Uh, right. And we don't, we don't want to hear anything about no sick babies because that's going to run our health, our, our costs up because this is, you know, these are HMOs. These are you know, privatized hospitals. So you just taught me something. Cities. I'm saying it's true the county and city should have handled it, but if they were under an emergency decree, that is the governor's fall, and he yeah. should go to jail for these emails. He should, and uh, and, and it took uh, President Obama a long time to even respond to the Flint situation. And he, he although he can say it wasn't the feds, it was the state. Sure. Where, where was he earlier? I mean, shares getting bottles of water sent in from Iceland. Incredible, that, Leanne, we're, we're going to break in one minute with you and Wayne to take a few calls, but is that not unprecedented, what he just pointed out, that the governor was over this? I, I didn't realize that reading 50 news articles on this. They obscured all that. So he, he's passing the buck too, Leanne. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the thing. The people voted, and the emergency manager just comes in and says, we don't care about your vote. This is what we're going to do here. So it's just very frightening. Wow, so state dictatorship forced poison water on Flint. I, I didn't understand that. When I'm wrong, which isn't a lot, but I'm wrong sometimes, I'll admit it. Well, I didn't understand that. This is even worse. Thank you, Wayne, for pointing that out. Wow. Let, let's come back and take a few phone calls in 70 seconds, the fourth hour, and then David Knight comes in. I'm going a little bit in the next segment with David Knight, and I'm going to tell you what's coming up. I'm going to try to get to more of your calls. David will get to the rest here in the fourth hour. I'd love to do the fourth hour, but I've got miles to go before I sleep, to quote uh, that famous poem, The Woods Are Lovely, Dark, and Deep. But I've got miles to go before I sleep. Let's go ahead and talk to John in New York because you bring up sleeper cells in the U.S. We know they're here. That's a false flag in and of itself because they let the radical Islamics in, let them attack, and then they, they don't get in trouble who brought them in. Uh, go ahead, John from New York. Yes, guys. Uh, I used to work for a major television network on the west side of uh, Manhattan. <laughs> I'm eating lunch. In that uh, building uh, was a, um, a famous uh, hard-hitting news investigation thing that shows up on uh, Sunday nights, uses a stopwatch. 60 we Minutes. Got a story one. Yes. Um, About Gen uh, General got, Alexander uh, what was, uh, Lebed uh, and the uh, disappeared 25 suitcase nukes? Yes, uh, that's part of it. But before that happened, what made that story happen was that a story came in and was covered by CBS News that uh, a call came in that a nuclear suitcase bomb was found in a garage in lower Manhattan. Now, I was at home when the story came on watching uh, television. I had a TV tray with some food on it. When that story came on, the tray went one way and the food went the other way trying to record it. I couldn't do it, so I figured I'd be at work the next day. I'd go down, 
to the newsroom and try to get a three-quarter inch pneumatic copy of the tape. And let me guess, they wouldn't um, give it to you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I heard them on CBS radio say that they blew up World Trade Center 7 and leveled it. No one believed me when I got back on the air that day. I was on the air like 10 hours. I literally went and got a pizza down the road during a break for 30 minutes. And then years later, the video service that was on CNN and Fox and that they jumped the gun. Reuters had given them a report saying it. They had they had they had uh, you know, basically jumped in the race before the starting pistol fired. That's amazing. I'm going to have Wayne and, and, and Leanne finish up in the next segment. Uh, and, and then Leanne's going to tell us some of the other reports she's got coming up from Flint. But. Wayne, I mean, it is that type of memory hole stuff where you see it, and then they won't give you a copy of it. That's what's really spooky. Yeah, it's it's what I've noticed with a lot of uh, breaking stories is they always say, "Oh no, the the initial uh, information is wrong," and uh, it's later that we get the correct information. I don't believe that to be true. I believe that the initial reports often are right on the money because sure. it's fresh in witnesses' minds. And, and it's just like what happened in, in, in Dealey Plaza in Dallas. Those witnesses who saw what they saw uh, were later pressured by the FBI into changing their sure, story. Sure, but I mean, with Building with 7, they said it fell before it fell, and then it did. I mean, we really caught them. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the same thing with the uh, 1993 Trade Center bombing. They came out with initial reports, and later we were told, no, they weren't correct either. So... I mean, this whole uh, situation with the news media, as the caller uh, from New York is suggesting, they do manipulate the news. They've been man manipulating the news at least since the end of World War II with the CIA's program called the Mighty Wurlitzer, where they control the television networks, papers, and et cetera. Leanne, I've run us up to the clock, both of you, for two minutes on the other side. Try to jam another call. We're going to hand it over to David Knight here. He's got a bunch of key stuff coming up across the board. But, Leanne, uh, what else do you got coming up in your investigations? Well, we're going to try and get some really great drone footage uh, just here in this town and just to let people get a bird's eye view of how beautiful this architecture was. Uh, it is from this city. And then you go and you see how dilapidated it all is. I drone mean, shows devastated Flint. Shows. Oh, yes. So it's going to be a really good view there. And um, obviously, we're going to be speaking with some locals, trying to get a personal account from people who have actually been in the most devastating. Amazing. Stay world. there, Leanne. I love how Hillary lands in Texas and only has six idiot supporters waiting for her. And I love the gimmick of, oh, she's a woman. So they have these articles in the Washington Post. All the women in the press are supporting her because she's a woman. Uh, it, it's just weird identity politics. I mean, I wouldn't vote for somebody because they're a man or a woman. It's, it's like the left claims they're so unbigoted. And they're the most bigoted, small-minded, gang mentality group of idiots I've ever seen. And again, because they're not the left. I am a liberal. Thomas Jefferson style, baby. You want to study history? In classical sense, Jefferson was a liberal. Washington was a conservative. I'm in between those two guys. Because I've read their debates between each other, the first and third president. Wayne, I want to, uh, Leanne, I had her go because the light's dropping. They're, they're going to launch a drone. They've got a bunch of interviews. And so the intrepid reporter, she wanted to get out there and get to work. But on, on what I just said, the labels, I mean, obviously the neocons are horrible. We opposed them. But now the Democrats, am I wrong in saying it's like watching cancer metastasize? And in Europe, too, is it the establishment using the left to make its biggest advancements ever for tyranny? Well, I, I've noticed uh, on the web the debate between the Hillary supporters and the supporters of Bernie Sanders, and I gotta, I gotta say that there's uh, appears to be this um, regimented attempt to force the uh, Hillary people into some sort of groupthink uh, that they all are, are are preaching off the same talking point memo received from the Clinton uh, campaign headquarters up in Brooklyn and New York. And, uh, you know, whether you agree with Sanders or not, uh, his supporters are really being torn apart by the uh, by, by the Hillary Clinton supporters are accusing them of being, um, you know, a white elitist uh, as Sanders is, you know, trying to make this a race issue. Oh, yeah. I didn't even cover that today. That's why I love having you on. I've got two articles here in the stack where they go. Sanders is too white. 
and you're white and you're racist and you're sexist when the guy is the most flaming liberal in the galaxy. It just shows they are nakedly using sex and race baiting to divide and conquer. Yeah.